Now, some other interesting development we want to report. Uh, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority is raising concern about a decline in port traffic. And uh, it's called a meeting of stakeholders in the maritime industry to discuss this. At that meeting was uh, the Ghana Union of Traders Association, uh, whose president joins us in a bit. But the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, uh, in a letter to the stakeholders, mentioned that uh, they noticed the decline in June, from June last year, and is carried through till uh, the first quarter of this year. And so, very uh, concerned because it also borders on revenue mobilization. Uh, joining us, President of uh, the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obeng. Are you surprised, sir, about this development? No, I'm not surprised at all. We've been, we've been saying this all the time. Now the port is empty. Why is it empty? It's empty because it is not in competition with itself. It's in competition with the rest of other ports in the sub-region. Mm. And that's, um, you, you are in competition to get even the landlocked um, uh, cargoes and all that. If you uh, look at the shipping line charges alone, once that um, the component of um, um, clearing cost, the shipping line component of it, um, the, uh, that of Togo is less than 1.5, and that of Ghana is about 6.8. That alone is deterrent for people to stop uh, coming here. Then you look at the cost of doing business at our port. It's extortively high, and it's so frustrating. And that na uh, uh, naturally, people will run from such a port. It's a business place. Uh, people compare it to other uh, business uh, places uh, uh, trading in the same uh, product. In this um, uh, uh, case, the service that they provide is to clearing of goods. And if the clearing, uh, clearance of goods is extremely high, it's obvious that people will find other areas um, to, to do their transaction. Mm. And this is what is happening. And now, um, if you look at the uh, internally, um, and you look at the reverse of the benchmark uh, values, it has increased um, duties. And if um, someone, uh, the duties are so much that sometimes you are unable to clear your goods and sometimes the goods have to be auctioned. And who will risk that? If you cannot afford paying the duty, then you don't have the business of importing the goods. I hope you understand. And, and those people who want to cut edges will also um, um, uh, 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 do so through smuggling. And we have been saying this, that if cost of doing business at the port is affordable, compliance level is so high and that people will want to bring their goods. Let me give you one scenario. Before the, uh, the reduction of the benchmark values um, in 2019, Côte d'Ivoire was importing um, rice of 1.5 uh, million metric tons. After, uh, after bringing the, uh, the reduction of a uh, benchmark where duties have reduced in Ghana, the importation of rice reduced drastically from 1.5 metric tons in Cote d'Ivoire to 1 million metric tons. What does this tell you? It means that uh, over 500,000 metric tons was being um, um, smuggled through the Western Corridor, through a Libo. Uh, 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 and elsewhere in the Grand Hafo, and then come to Ashantri, and then find its way to Accra. And, and this is what we are telling. Now, we are losing business to Togo. And, and people are bringing their goods to Togo, especially the landlocked uh, 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 business that we are having, the Burkina Faso and all that. Yeah. And so, we have to look. And then, um, aside this, uh, the roadblocks, even our brothers in Kumasi are complaining that after they clear their goods from the Tama port, then they have to contend with numerous roadblocks at the, uh, uh, on the road. And that sometimes they are, they are being made to pay extra monies and all that before they will be able to clear their goods. So policing, this task force and all that make it so frustrating to do business at the uh, Tama port. And that, that it, they have to look at all um, these things, if they want to uh, make uh, the Tamar port very attractive again. 
So we are losing business. I've told you we are not uh, competitive at all in, do, right. um, um, in the sub-region. In the sub-region, the business that we do, um, we are ceding our listen to our attraction to Togo, Nigeria, and elsewhere. And this is what has happened to the, uh, the thermal port also. And the GPHA is obviously worried because of the implications uh, for revenue mobilization. But there's, there are also some people who think, oh, well, this is very good. If you look at the positive side, that means you're not going to be importing so much and we can actually locally produce what we need. No, but sometimes they don't also know that uh, importation is not limited to uh, those of us who are trading and that. Um, uh, manufacturers is also affected the same way. Yeah, and so it, it should not de be defined that only uh, the goods that we are bringing to trade with. And so um, um, that one is too simplistic. Um, it, it, uh, the cost of doing business is just too high. And because uh, um, there are some countries that are not manufacturing countries, and so we cannot uh, pretend that we are advanced nation and that. Uh, we are industrial nation and that we do not need import. Countries like Dubai do not have man, uh, uh, manufacturing entities, but they survive on trading. Mm. Our neighbors, Togo, are surviving on trading. So who says trading is negative? Vibrant, uh, no, uh, there, there wouldn't be any vibrant industrialization without vibrant distributing, uh, distribution um, 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 network. And, um, and that we should ensure that we have a very vibrant distribution um, uh, uh, leg for uh, manufacturing. Otherwise, um, um, we cannot even try in our in the, in the quest for industrialization. And so I don't agree with those people who think in that line. Okay. Because we have to be able to do business and we have to also attract the business. The business that we do, we do not do it in isolation. We do it in competition with um, our neighboring countries. And we are, we are having the edge of arrest because their cost of doing business is far below and it's attracting uh, businesses from um, even from Ghana and from the rest of um, other member states in the sub-region. I see that the Association of Ghana Industries uh, was in that meeting, Chamber of Commerce, Ghana Institute of Trade Forwarders, Importers and Exporters Association, and the Association of Custom um, House Agents. Would you say that uh, it was a fruitful meeting based on the deliberations Very fruitful you had? meeting. The car dealers were also there. And the car dealers were also complaining that, that they are unable even to bring their cars, the, the prices that they are paying, especially for the so-called luxury cars and all that, the challenges that they are facing um, when they bring their cars and then they allow Interpol to come uh, uh, um, 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 to flash those, uh, the so-called stolen cars away. Because they are third-party buyers. They are not um, um, the people who stole these cars. And then why were, uh, were these uh, cars even able to go through the, the, uh, uh, the port of exit in the mm. first place? How were they able to even um, go through uh, the, the port of origin before coming here? And they are just third party. And in, in somewhere other countries, they are not tolerating Interpol because these people are not the, the people who go and steal the cars. They have the legitimate documents and they are able to uh, ship it through uh, the port of entry. And so uh, what, 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 what is it about? And so these people are all shying away from buying the cars. And customs got a lot of money from these car dealers. And now they are also challenged. And nobody is even fighting for their, uh, for their cause. The fact that um, they are being uh, victimized of these uh, stolen cars and they are, when, after they bring, uh, brought these goods, um, and they come and, and take all these uh, goods okay. and their capitals. Most of them have lost their capitals. And then don't, don't also forget that the effects of the, uh, uh, the forest. Last year, uh, they planted most of our capitals. I was telling you in most of your inter inter interviews that our capital has been depleted. So if you have a capital that could bring goods worth of uh, about... Um, and four containers, and your capital was depleted last year about 50%. It means that you are only able to bring two containers. So that, that effect was also very, very, very immense and very impactful um, and negatively um, to um, um, our imports.
Well, well, finally, I mean, the whole of this week, you've been raising concern about the proposed tax measures. You are asking government to, you know, take a second look at it because of this impact on the business community. Uh, the government is bent on having that vote today. Uh, chances are that it will be passed, and it looks like your calls have fallen on deaf ears. Um, after today, if it's passed, um, what, what's going to be the implication, you, do you think, for businesses? Yeah, um, if, if uh, I believe Parliament um, does not represent itself, uh, Parliament does not represent its own interest. It represents the interest of the people who voted for them. We are their constituents, and so our uh, interest is paramount. In this case, particular case, all the business community is against this tax because we are we are overburdened already. And so uh, the, I, I believe Parliament will serve our interests rather than serving their own interests. They do not represent themselves. They represent the people of Ghana. And so if they pass this, uh, I, will, I will be very surprised. And that may be our faith in them will, will, will go down. All right. But, uh, but so I still believe that they will do the needful so that businesses are not collapsed. IMF doesn't mean that going to IMF doesn't mean we have to kill businesses. Um, it, it no, may not occur well uh, for the trans, uh, transformation agenda that we seek, that okay. we want to transform our economy. And so, so they have to think again, because we could have used other options to enhance on our mm. revenue uh, collection rather than adopting this particular one, especially the uh, 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 growth and uh, um, this and um, Sustainability. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Joseph, for being. I appreciate your time with us, President of Guta. There, you're watching the market.